So, first of all, I want to thank all the people that is here, all the organization, all this inspiring vibration that is truly inspiring for me also. Uh, I actually don't like to prepare this kind of spe speeches, especially because I think the heart knows that in the, the proper time what to say. Uh, I think it's important to leave a message that is connected with my project, that is Kutsaka. And Kutsaka, it means being happy in the local dialect, Shangana. This is a project based in Bilan, 200 kilometers up Maputo in Mozambique. And uh, after being a um, a national training manager in one of the biggest companies in Portugal and quit my job because I was not happy and going to uh, uh, travel around and living in community I set up this project in uh, Mozambique and the, the big learning I have with these kids because they are my masters after, after a spiritual journey too that I respect and I maintain I've learned that the spirituality is here and now and with the simple things and with the simple hugs and the simple looks and the simple acts that they started uh, the morning today. Because I truly believe that is, this is the way how we create our lives. Um, I also, for, all, for me it's also a pleasure to empower women, not only these kids but also the women because someone yesterday said that when we empower other people, we empower us too. So uh, I think my purpose that I usually say is to awake consciousness. It's feeding by this love and this, uh, this connected, connectedness and this uh, working together, sharing together. This is what I feel. Um, I also would like to, to, to leave a message for um, respect and compassion and love for all the families that are living this terrible tragedy in Mozambique. It's not where we are, it's up in the center part of the country, but I would like to, to leave a sort of all this love and compassion that we are living here to all these families. And uh, I would like also to leave a message for all the people here sharing my humble um, testimonial about purpose because it's supposed we, we, we talk about passion and inspiring people. And I would like to say that if you have a dream, please take the risk because uh, when we take the risk, if we have a good intention, if the intention is pure and it's really for the good of all, for my own, for all, because it's not else if it's only for the others, it's not else if it's only for me. But if the intention is pure, pure and good for all, and if we are determined, because the last traveled path is full of challenges, so you have to get the courage and the, the determination, you need to believe, you need to have faith, because the whole universe conspires with you. Finally, and uh, I asked Tanya if I could uh, ask this here. We are uh, in a short list for a votation to win an award that is very important for us. And uh, as I do believe in miracles, because I always say this, we are some here in the room, and it's very easy to make a miracle, a miracle in this morning. How? If we have our cell phones and we can visit our website, www.kutsaka.com, K-U-T-S-A-C-A, -A, Kutsaka, you will find the webs, uh, our website full of orange, the colors, and the, the, the photographs of the, the kids. And we have a box right in the home page, which is explained in English, if you go to English. 
and uh, says how, can, how you can vote in Kutsaka. You just click on the heart when you, when you enter in the link. You click on the heart after our name, Associação Kutsaka. Leave your email and vote. And this can make us win this award, which is 7,500 euros that, believe me, makes all the difference in a project like us that is an independent project and uh, that arrived here with this whole conspiration universe work with, with me and the, with my, my team. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susanna, for taking us awareness, taking our awareness into Mozambique and what happens there. We're with you in this solemn time. And I think if collectively we can send our energies to that part of the world, the healing will come. Thank you. Thank you for sharing also the website where we can share. Thank you. I invite Paula to share her journey and her words to enlighten us this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Hi. Um, I first want to thank the organization for, for having me here. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, how I started my journey to the, towards fighting uh, marine litter and microplastics. Uh, so I, I started uh, becoming interested in this matter like um, 11 years ago when people start talking about how much litter was on, in the ocean. And then as a, uh, as a researcher, I started to do some research on the topic and realized that uh, this was really a huge problem that we were facing and with uh, unknown consequences, not only for ecosystems, but for us all. Uh, and so uh, the more I investigated, the more I realized that I had to do something, something more. And uh, within the scope of a project that we had, uh, it was directed to create awareness and co-responsibility uh, towards marine litter in the European seas. Um, I really felt the need to bring this knowledge to society. Uh, and, um, well, many things happened, but one of those things was that uh, I, um, I founded an um, um, NGO called uh, Portuguese Marine Litter Association. Uh, and this is uh, where we now um, uh, enforce our, our knowledge, our scientific knowledge, uh, to um, educate, to, um, to do capacity building, uh, to inspire people, to change their behavior uh, so that they can start making sustainable options um, and, uh, uh, well, partnerships. We do need partnerships. Uh, we, this is a problem that we all created. At some point, we all left some litter somewhere. Uh, and so I think we connect very easily to, to this. And uh, un unless we work on this together all the sectors of society, uh, there is no way we are going to solve this. So uh, we really want to inspire people through this uh, NGO and through knowledge, of course, uh, to change and to uh, change for a better world uh, where we all can live in. That's it. Thank you so much, Paula, for doing this really inspiring body of work. It's really, it's an honor to have you with us, really. And you've dedicated, you've created a legacy, you've dedicated a lifetime to this. So I hope this touched us in some ways and we can continue to take your work forward. Thank you. Obrigada. I invite Elsa Gonsalves. Welcome, Elsa. Good morning. This is my first time that I will do a speech in English. So I ask you your support and love. Let my comfort zone. 
So, uh, I'm sorry about my bad English, I'll do my best. It's a great privilege to be here today, to live this now moment. The future is now, is this moment. I am very grateful for the recognition even more coming from people as special as those who organized this event, Women Economic Forum. A dream comes true. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, everyone that came this. On the subject of sustainability, that is so comprehensive. For me, sustainability is also happiness. I'm very grateful for this award that I dedicate to all women and men that contribute for a better world. Thank you all. If I'm here today, it was because one day I also work on emotionally sustainability. I don't say I, I pronounce this word well. Sustainability. And I started with the most obvious, myself. In 2016, I lived the most challenged year of my life, and I was feeling depressed, physically, psychologically, financially, and emotionally bankruptcy. Because we are emotions. I went through what I call today as a dark phase of the soul to discover myself and find me. Who am I? What is my purpose in life? What did I come here to do in this planet, this plan? These are questions I try to answer by falling to get away from myself. It was then that I decided to plunge into a process of immersion within myself and face all my shadows, decomposing life from inside. Last year, after realigning myself, I wrote a book that I inspired in a short time and which I call the singularities of a woman of 40. This book is more than a fictional story. It was the combination of 40 years, years of life and experience that turned into words after being mere thoughts and deepest thoughts, I dare say. They came from the depths of my soul. So, because I have only two minutes, <laughs> the first episode in the story of this woman, the character she dressed herself, Marielena, came up to, after going to the supermarket here in Tumar, bought a ham, and as taken care of by the assistant, I noticed some sad, very sad eyes that moved and left to me to think. Make it clear, I have nothing against those who work in supermarkets. But those sad eyes, are my sad eyes. And then I realized that we are all one. And question, what caused someone to give up their speckle in the, their eyes? Taking my personal experience, it was also at 40 that I wake up. That is why the book is called Singularities of a Woman of 40. The first 40 are the more difficult. The others are easy for those who have the courage to break, break their assumptions. My friends, the only rule is to be happy. To be loved for us and for others. That's the only rule. Break the rules. For me, having discovered this was very powerful because I decided to be happy. Period. Instead of changing the others, 
I changed myself. I started to realize dreams from the moment that I put aside the idea that I have, I have to have my feet on the ground. I don't want to have my feet on the ground. I want to fly. <laughs> and I also knew that by making this journey of living my true, I could bring more prosperity into my life and happiness. So I want to leave you with this message. Sustainability begins in each of us. Make happiness a decision and know that the other is you, the other is I, in a spirit of unity and fraternity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elsa. You're amazing. Thank you. Life is not measured by the number of breaths we take. It's indeed measured with the moments that take our breath away. So it really, this panel is reminding me of the work that's already been done. And we must carry it in our hearts to continue. You know, even if we could be, even if we could carry like just a small nugget of the learning that's available this morning, I think we could help create a better planet. It's already happening. I invite Margarita Silva. We welcome you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank the Women Economic Forum for this awesome and humbling opportunity and recognition. I realize that many, many other women could have been here and should have been here uh, instead of myself. So I, I take this as sort of a collective award for the countless girls and women who have... and men who have been giving their time and effort to protect the Portuguese environment. My personal story can basically be divided into two chapters. The first one lasted for the first 27 years, and that's the time when I was blissfully unaware of the environment as an issue, even though I had graduated in biology. But then things changed. First, there was this huge garbage incinerator that started construction nearby. I researched the um, impact of air emissions and it was simply unacceptable. So the next eight years were spent campaigning as a volunteer, both against the construction and in favor of waste recycling policies. But when it looked like I might finally go back to focus on my career and my family, genetically modified food had come onto the world scene. With my background in molecular biology, my starting viewpoint was highly positive. That is, until I caught myself wondering about the possibility of health and environmental mishaps. Soon, friends and colleagues were daring me to go public with my views, and so I did. Little did I know then that a full 20 years would pass before I could move on. Currently, for about four years, I've been focusing on agricultural pesticides, still as a volunteer. And today, looking back, a pattern becomes obvious that is common to these three struggles. And that pattern is how science is systematically used as a weapon against health and environmental protection. Scientists and regulators seem to be always on hand, ready to claim science proves this or that is safe. These people are either ignorant, foolish, or outright dishonest. By the very nature of its method, science cannot ever prove a hypothesis is true, ever. An experiment can only prove a hypothesis is wrong. 
That's the absolute best we can hope to get out of the lab. So we can be sure a herbicide like glyphosate, better known as Roundup, is harmful because it did cause cancer to the poor animals it was tested on. But if another pesticide is tested to check if the safety hypothesis is right, and nothing visible happens to the mice, all we can say is that no proof of harm was found. If a different set of experiments was done with the same chemical, all sorts of negative impacts may suddenly become clear. And that, of course, puts us light years away from being able to make any safety claims based on any testing, no matter how extensive. This reasoning being so obvious, and scientists being quite intelligent, my conclusion is that science is irrevocably broken into two opposite camps the honest, truth-seeking tribe, and the sold-out, conflict-of-interest-ridden mercenaries. So, from now on, when you hear officials defending something in the name of science which doesn't feel right, start by asking where the money is flowing. But remember, side effects may include 20 years of unexpected hard work. So, thank you so much. Bom dia. Good morning. Uh, estou aqui para partilhar convosco I'm here to share um pouco da minha superação e a da little minha... bit of how I overcame e da minha sustentabilidade and how I became sustainable, que é o amor. which is through love. Uh, na minha história de vida, My tenho, life history à conclusão e à certeza que o amor cura. brought me to the point where I'm perfectly sure that love heals. Ao longo de 40 anos, desafiei-me com o cancro na minha família. Throughout 40 years, I was challenged with cancer in my family. Morte atrás de morte, cancro atrás de cancro. Death after death, cancer after cancer. Simplesmente tinha que encontrar recursos para superar-me e viver uh, as dores profundas da minha alma. So I any way at all, I just had to find a path and resources to overcome this deep soul pain that I was going through. E pelo amor fui ficando. It was through love that it happened. Até que há 20 anos atrás surge o meu primeiro cancro. Until 20 years ago when I myself got my first cancer. E eu não queria acreditar. I just couldn't believe it. Porque julgava que os 20 anos anteriores a minha dedicação a toda a família que fui perdendo com o cancro, achava que eu não merecia também passar por essa situação. I just couldn't believe it because I I thought that the previous 20 years when I helped my family along and went through all that pain made me free of the need to go through this. E quando tenho a notícia que simplesmente tinha dois meses de vida, and at this point, I got the news that I had two months to live. A única, o único pensamento que tive foi, eu não posso morrer. And I just decided and thought to myself, I just cannot die. Porque alguém precisava de mim. And somebody needed me. E esse alguém era a minha mãe. It was my mom. She needed me que passado três semanas de saber a minha notícia, a, a terceira filha que teria cancro, é despertado o cancro na minha mãe. Three weeks after my diagnosis, uh, and for my mom, that was the 
third child, the third daughter that was getting cancer, three weeks after that, she herself got cancer. Minha mãe com 47 anos de idade, eu achei que eu tenho que me curar por ela, independentemente do tempo que ela ainda sobreviver. Na altura, a situação era tão grave que lhe deram sete dias de vida. My mom, it turned out, uh, I was told that she had seven days to live. And, and I thought to myself, I just have to overcome this. I just have to get better again because I have to do this for her. Eu passo esta mensagem porque, de facto, o amor cura. Eu, simplesmente, pelo amor que tinha a minha mãe para evitar o sofrimento dela, eu curei-me. So I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I've, I've, re, I've really come to understand that love heals. Because I loved my mom so much that somehow it helped myself heal my own cancer. O que posso partilhar convosco é que neste momento eu sou a única sobrevivente da família e onde passei por um processo de três cancros Passado 10 anos do primeiro, tenho o segundo. Nível 4, portanto, situações muito complicadas. E há um ano e meio, tenho o terceiro cancro. E eu estou aqui a olhar para vós, com o coração cheio de amor, onde não perdi a capacidade de amar e de sorrir, e sentir que o meu propósito, de facto, é levar a esperança aos corações que precisam. Okay, so I, I stand here before you after three cancers. Um, ten years after the first one, I got my second one. And then, sometime later, I got my third one. And throughout all of this, I, I, it, it was love that fueled my process. I, I am here standing before you as the last surviving member of the tribe that went through this cancer ordeal and um, it was love that made the difference. Yes. E sem dúvida que ao longo desta minha experiência de 40 anos de superação fui descobrindo os meus recursos internos, fui descobrindo a capacidade e o poder que nós seres humanos temos para a autocura So after these 40 years of self-discovery, I, I got to meet my own inner resources that allowed me to um, make the best of it. E esses recursos estão dentro de nós, a nossa capacidade de nos amarmos, descobrir e despertar consciências do poder que nós temos e de facto se sentimos o amor pela vida, pelo outro, pelo planeta, sentimos a gratidão todos os dias estarmos vivos, por vezes esquecemos, não é? Que mais um dia respiramos, mais um dia vivemos. Há que agradecer. All right. So I can't do this, but um, she's saying I've The inner resources that she found most helpful, the strongest, was uh, living in love. Living in love for other people, for the planet, and for herself. So that, that, that alone justifies staying alive and, and living each day as another opportunity to share love, to feel love, and to surround ourselves in love. Is that right? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Deixei o meu testemunho, o cancro e o amor, onde partilho realmente a potencialidade que cada ser humano tem para a sua própria cura. Muito obrigada. So, there's a book with her life story where she shares um, what she went through and how she got out of it, out of it um, on the other end. Obrigada. Thank you. And thank you, Margarita, for the translation. So, you know, in India, we do believe that 
um, the emotion that breaks you is the very emotion that helps you heal because that's where the light gets in. So you're a living testament of that. Thank you. We honor your spirit. Thank you. If I could invite Grasa Martino to share her journey. Good morning. First of all, I want to congratulate the uh, organizing committee uh, for uh, bringing this great event here to tomorrow. Thank you. And uh, uh, thank you um, all and the uh, WEF for uh, having honored me uh, with this award. Um, despite I don't uh, consider myself a special woman, and there are around the world many iconic women, it is it's still a stimulus to continue working for a better uh, world. Well, I'm an environmental engineer. I'm a professor at the New University of Lisbon uh, in the areas of waste uh, ma management. Um, despite my background in engineering, I early understood that uh, science and technology is not enough to solve waste problems. It is necessary to change attitudes and behaviors. It is necessary proactive participation of all. That's why I uh, have always been involved in the governmental and non-governmental environmental uh, organizations and uh, promote and motivate my students for a series of uh, environmental education initiatives, many of them pioneers in Portugal. Um, now I'm going to read my short message uh, to not exceed uh, the time I have. According to the United Nations, under a business as usual scenario, the global production of municipal waste that today is around 2 billion tons will increase to 3.4 uh, tons, <coughs> billion tons by 2050. 17% of this waste goes to dumps or landfills, and many end up in the sea, the global marine litter, uh, Paula's uh, talk. That's a lot of, of waste, and this means that we are using our resources in a very bad way. Waste management methods have always been the same over the time. We dump, burn, or recycle. What was changed over the time is the technological evolutions of process, more efficient and with less environmental impacts. But their assess and use is very unequal in the world. In the high income countries, these processes are more and more technological advanced and very expensive, driven by strong regulations. But they are, but they are unable to manage all the waste they produce, and so they export to less technological advanced countries, such as uh, waste of electric and electronic equipments, plastic waste, hardware waste, thus worsening the state of the environmental in these countries. In many low- and middle-income countries, regulations and technological process continue to, a very, uh, to be very weak. There is no adequate collection and treatment of waste management. And the, in these countries, millions of people uh, survive as a waste pickers. They are typical women, children, unemployed, or immigrants. That's why waste management is the universal problem that affects the whole world with these complex dimensions, political, technical, economical, environmental, ethical. Our economic model was survived thanks to the strong increase in consumption, achieving at the cost of creating new needs and stimulating the desire with publicity and the reduction of a average lifespan of the products by a process psychosocial technology shortening. Today's society, society has conflicting aspirations. We want a strong industrial ground, generating jobs and then and they come at the expense of consumption. At, at the same time, we want a less stressful way of life 
in environmental of a better quality and sustainable management of resources. This is a complex social dilemma. Uh, how are governments, business and industries addressing this challenge? Well, today they talk a lot of circular economy as a solution for resources and waste problem. But the debate was focused mainly on recycling and little, and little on reducing production and consumption, which is what causes waste. And how can uh, each of us contribute to solve overconsumption and waste problems? An important part of waste management begins in our home, in our jobs, on an individual level. Strategies for educating citizens are the first and important step, step. We need to transform consumers into active agents of change, motivate and empower them to refuse to be irrational consumers and the big waste producers. I believe that I, each of you, all of us, can work for this change. Thank you for your attention. Hi, good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I really appreciate the recognition. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be considered in this such brilliant panel of women that have made the difference. In my case, my passion is people, and everything I do uh, is regarding people. I try to take the best out of each person. I focus my life history, my career history, in changing um, some people. I want to believe that. Um, I've been in Angola for 25 years now, and I've been training and contributing for over 5,000 people that are employed. I focused my mission in helping young generations to find their first job, people with no education and apparently with no opportunities or at least easy opportunities in life. I focused on those um, groups and we've made, not myself alone, obviously this involves a lot of people and a lot of effort and a lot of love and dedication. But we have um, helped um, people to create a hope, uh, to believe in, their, in themselves, which I think it's the most important part of the journey, and to believe that they are able to achieve their goals if they really work hard and if they have confidence in themselves and in the groups and teams with whom they work. I think if we contribute, each one of us, in his own field, um, and we can touch and move at least one person around us, or five or ten, we are doing our part of the job. And together, if, everything, if everyone thinks about this, together we can change the world. I believe in that, and I hope that women that are listening to me, and men as well, also believe in that. Together we can change the world. We have been changing the youth in Angola, we have been changing hope in people, and I think we can do that in other countries in the world. Thank you so much. So much, Paula. So beautifully said. If we can, all we need to do as our personal responsibility is to touch and move maybe only one person, and we're doing our part of the job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your presence. Thank you. And to take us and to transform us into a world of art, I invite our last speaker, but in no measure the least, look at her. I welcome Engracia Cardoso. Hello, everyone. I need to read. Sorry. It's a, it is a great pleasure to stay here with you today in my hometown. I want to thank uh, awards and invitation to be here. Um, 
I have been developing my work in finds of visual arts, dedicating my time to the exploring of the different nuance of the drawing, but about other expressions, painting and sculpture and photography. And also present plastic perspectives of the drawing and the narrative. Over a course of 20 years, I have been thinking and create for her exhibition as a circumstance of action and contemplation. Looking at the landscape with a certain thing give me the possibility to think of the graphic and textual memory. And Pat alone wish the transition between the ambiguous states of the landscape and the inhabitable space are mapped. The human conditions reside in the tensions between life and forms. The peculiar being that stars, uh, starts from its one road implanted as a social and a cultural being and reveals to us a man who has a sense for landscape but who has a become dissociated from the meaning of the great nature. We need to change that. That is here why we have here for. Thank you all uh, for, for, for staying here.